So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today I'm joined by two members from the band Touring. I have Daryl, the lead singer, and I have Jay, uh, who's the bass player for the band. And they're about to release an album on July 12th. And we're here to talk about it. So first of all, how are you guys today? Good. Yeah. Really good. Really Thanks, mate. <clears throat> it's it's already nighttime over there in England, right? <laughs> yeah, it's about yeah, it's about eight, eight o'clock at night. Yeah, but I, it's so fucking sunny. I yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, it's it's summertime, so I'm guessing it. The uh... you 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 say sunny, okay? We live in England, so <laughs> when you say sunny, I when know, you I sunny. know. I live in Puerto Rico. I see the sun all the time. You guys. Are like, <laughs> Yeah, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> this is as good as it gets. Oh, I know. I, I went to England, but I went in March of 2016. And it was pretty cold. Uh, it was pretty cold. And uh, it's still, uh, I, went, I, I enjoyed London. Uh, uh, didn't get into the didn't get into the English food, <laughs> but that's my fault. I come from Puerto Rico, and we, you know, our food is really good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you, what, what 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 what's your cuisine in Puerto Rico? What kind of food do you eat? In so Puerto Rico? Rico, like we love our rice and beans, uh, but wow. we have uh, stuff with plantains that we call mofongo. Which you, you take the plantains and you squish them and you make like a like a shape of the plantains and you can put meat inside of it and other nice. stuff. It's really good uh, and it's really fresh. You can put seafood there, anything, and, it, and it's really and it's really good. Uh, so, so in England, we're different. So basically in England, it's potatoes. So everything's uh, a potato that's cut and fried and we call yeah. them chips. Some people call them fries, they're not fries, it's big chips. We Fish we just like to fry everything. Chips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we don't like anything that's fresh. We like stuff that's fried and bad for you. That's basically <laughs> oh, here in Puerto Rico, there's some fried stuff that you can get, but we like here the the you know, like since it's an island, we can get like fresh fish like everywhere. So yeah, it re it's really good food. Uh so, but we're we're an island, but we still import our food from everywhere else. We're, well, we're, we're very <laughs> also well. We have food that we make here, and the something really great about Puerto Rico is the coffee. If you ever have oh. a chance to have Puerto Rico coffee, yeah. it's really good. Yeah, if you if we have really good lager. Which is a beer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not even that good. We just drink a lot of it. But you're right. Your your coffee is perfect. Very good. Yes, yes. Uh, like we, it's real coffee, not like what the Americans call coffee. And it's really like water, uh, <laughs> like cold water. It's ah, oh, it, it, it's terrible American coffee. I, I I hate it. But yeah, uh, but yeah, we're here. We're not here to talk about coffee or cuisine. Are we not? <laughs> no, we can talk about everything. That's that's what the fun thing is about. But uh, yeah, the you you guys are releasing a new album soon, and I listened to it, and it's a pretty you know you it's a pretty bleak and in your face record. Uh, and I love the title, the unforgiving, the unfor the unforgiving, the unforgiving reality in nothing. That's a great title. Uh, so let let. Let's talk about it. Like, how did, how did you guys came up with that title? Because that title really says it all. So for years, we've been called This is Turin um, because the, the city of Turin in Italy is known as the, the, the city of, well, at one point, there was like the city of evil. But um, for us, everything we've ever written, note by note, lyrics, has always been about the human condition and about um, what it what it's like to be a human, um, especially as you're getting a bit older. <laughs> we're a little bit more long in the tooth, which means more wrinkles, um, bad hairline, unlike James J. Um, <laughs> and it's uh, the unforgiven reality in nothing is the fact that sometimes when you, there's a point in your life when you realise 
or you feel like <laughs> everything means nothing. You know, dreams have gone. Um, you know, you you realize that all those youthful dreams you may have had have gone. And the unforgiven reality of nothing is really about how that feels and how you deal with it. Yeah, that's that's a great way to put it. You know, like uh, a lot of and it's very relatable because everyone when they're young thinks like, oh, I'm gonna do this. It's gonna be so easy, and and, and us older folk will be like, no, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's not gonna be that easy. It's gonna have lots of obstacles, and sometimes you get mad when you don't get what you want. But I ask you, people, is it what you need? Sometimes what you want is not what you need. Uh, we're getting deep here. <laughs> Very no, it's right. It's yeah. completely right. It's mm -hmm. completely right because um, you grow. I mean, this <laughs> we're getting deep now, but when you fall, you get up stronger, and it's the same thing. It's um, you don't know how good things are until you they're gone, and then once you can climb back up. Um, you realize you know how hard it can be um and also how how input how how incredibly um wealthy you are by having those things in your life split yeah. what do you think yeah, as long, yeah. Like, that's a great thing like uh, as long as you're breathing and you have food on your table you're doing better than most people exactly yeah to be grateful. Exactly. So, what about you, Jay? What do you think, man? You you should be grateful for your hair. I am. I am. <laughs> I'm very. I'm grateful to my mother. I have to give a shout out. Shout out to my mom. Our, our hair at Daryl. Daryl's like, oh, fuck off. Well, we're flaunting. <laughs> no, it's gone. He's 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 just gone. No, no, I mean, you, can, I, you know, I, you can pull out that that bald look because like, uh, there's people that can pull it out, like Jason Statement, and there's people that can't pull out the bald look. But yeah. Oh man, if I could give you a hug, I would do. I'd give you a big yeah. hug. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so what about you, Jay? Uh, uh, you were just going to talk about, you know, what that means to you. Yeah. So it's quite. It, it is interesting because the the album title, um, it's a, you know, it's it's an acronym for the band name as well, and I think every oh, every member. Yeah, yeah. So we we, we, well, we tried to be a bit clever, but I think every member's got a slightly a slightly different um, thought behind it. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, the like when we first came up with the with 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 the uh, the name, <clears throat> we had it as a as a track first. So the track that's on the album, it was called the Unforgiven Reality and Nothing, and that was like our that was the first piece of music that we wrote. Um, which we which kind of got us to work with Monik, and then we decided to to give the 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 album the same name because it had so much meaning behind it. Um, and for me personally, I think the 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 album title is 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 kind of when you get to that when you get to that stage and you and it's similar to what Daz has said really, like when you get to that that stage where you suddenly realise that everything that you've got, <clears throat> like it doesn't really mean much. To be fair, as long as you're being true to yourself, um, you know, loads of people chase they want they want to be like other people. They look at social media, they want everybody else's life. You, you know, when you get you, you, when you get to the point where you realise that actually you don't need to chase that, and it's that kind of it's that unforgiving reality when you realise that what you've got isn't what you've got, and you've got to change direction, and you've got to look at yourself, and you've got to like you, you've got to go with what you want, not with what somebody else wants. And that's how I saw it. That that that's kind of what it means to me. It's we, especially with the album. You know, this was what we wanted. This wasn't what anyone else wanted. This is what we wanted to do, and this is what we and the way we wanted it to sound. And it it, it kind of just all came together like that for me. Yeah, no, no. I just noticed the acronym now, but uh, yeah, it, it's good points because yeah, sometimes people think like if you see someone like with a super expensive car and everything, they're doing great, and you never know. <laughs> they might be in debt because of that fucking car. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never been like, like really like a car person. I used to live in Miami a few years ago and I saw Ferraris all the time. And, and, I, saw, and I saw people who had license plates like my other car. And, mm. and I had only one car. So I'm like, I, I should put on my license plate like this is it. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
What's your favorite type of car? I really don't give a shit about cars. I've never <laughs> not even as a Up kid. Into that conversation, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like I, I think you know, I've seen cars. Yeah, they're pretty and nice, but I've never. I it's you know, there's men that like have a love for cars that I've never had. Uh, I always prefer more like buying music that, than yeah. cars. Like cars to me never did anything. I just wanted my car to take me from point A to point B. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's it. But uh, and I never and plus I have two kids. If I had an expensive car, I, you know they they they, fruit, they eat and they shit, they do stuff that you know they don't take care of it. So I'm like, no, I, I'll 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 stick with my Toyota. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but are you into cars, Daryl? Yeah, yeah, I am a little bit. Yeah, I like uh, I like Fords. Really into Fords. I've got a nice uh Ford racing car. I like yeah, I do like cars, but I'm quite eclectic. I'm 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 the weird one in the band. I love every I love the most savage of death metal grindcore, but I'm also into like sports and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm that uh, yeah, I'm the there's guy never a rule. Like I know there's been a rule sometimes in metal that if you like metal you hate sports. I'm like why? Why why can't you love both? <laughs> I know. Mate, mate, yeah, we, we're quite eclectic as a bunch as well. We all have our own interests and hobbies, and that's what makes people interesting. You know, yeah, we get on really well because we've all got our own little passions. And yeah. um, I say that, they hate me. <laughs> I'm, joking. You what? I'm not joking, they hate me. Uh, but yeah, no, we, we, you know, we've all got our own thing to bring to the table. Yeah. So, uh, the sound of touring is not like an easy to like. You guys, it's it's extreme, but you guys do different stuff. How how would you explain or like to someone who hasn't listened to touring like the the sound of the band in general? Mm. Um, Go on. I think I think one one thing that we've been one thing that we it, it's been a, it's been a blessing and a curse for like for the entirety that we've been that we've been going. Um, and we've always been said that we've kind of like split genres, so we've ne no one's ever been able to pigeonhole us into a certain into a certain category. We've always been able to kind of uh, um, please a variety of different people. So when I'm trying to explain what the band is, I I, I always go with you know I don't, we're not just one thing. We're 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 a bit of everything. We 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 can pretty much um, we include e every genre going. Especially the album, and the album I think points that it's you know the album to motive. The album's got some like blistering parts in it. We've got some technical parts in it. We've got some really melodic parts. We've got some orchestral parts. We've we've brought together like all our influences, which go, which spans ridiculous amounts of genres, and that and we and we plow it, plow it all into our music. So we never kind of write a track going, we're going to write a death metal track. We always write it as, you know, we've got an idea, let's work on that idea. And I think that's that's how I explain the band. We're not, we're, we're we, everybody will find something that they like in our music. And that will, um, and I think the, yeah, the, the album speaks speaks for that. And I think it's, it's a perfect representation of how we do that. Yeah, awesome. D Daryl, are you still with us? Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I took my camera off. Sorry. Oh no, yeah. don't worry, don't worry. So, uh, so yeah, I think that that's a good way to describe it. And so, you guys were uh, before called "This Is Touring." How did you decide to take off the "This Is" and just put "Touring"? It felt like it was a new era for the band. We've been together for a long time. We've worked together collectively for a long time, um, and it felt like it was time to show this new side of us, push things musically. Um, and when I say musically, it's not just about how well you play an instrument, it's how well you write a song. Yeah. And um, there was a concept behind it. Um, you know, um, we I can vividly remember we spent a night around James J's house, Splinter, as I know him, um, and we really decided what direction we were taking things, and we and we start we we kind of went you know we've been doing this for a long long time as as friends, 
but what is it we want to achieve and what's our kind of mission statement like a business would have and we were all like yeah that's the same page we're on it's like we're at our best when we're raw when we're emotional and when everything means something it's real it's not um playing something for playing something's sake it's real um so we were like, you know, we are Turin. We've always been called, this is Turin. People go, oh, it's Turin. That's Turin, you know. And we'll go, well, you know, I'm from Turin. Um, and then the unforgiving reality in nothing really, really, really sums up the majority of the, the context of this band's lyrics, um, its ethos, that I think as people, we're fairly positive people. <laughs> Um, and the reason we are able to be quite positive people is because we have an outlet that is true, because we're allowed to use that and, you know, um, it's difficult to say because every, every member of this band has been through some really difficult times. I mean, like um, stuff that as a parent, as a person, you would never want to go through. Um, but we've used that and spun it and made it as positive as we can and used it in the right way. And that's helped us all, saved us, you know. It really has. And we've all been in it together. So Turin is us saying, you know, we understand suffering and as such, we're there for you. Yeah, no, and, and that's a good thing to say, you know, like uh, sometimes uh, music heals, you know, like uh, uh, like sometimes if I'm in a bad or pissy mood or something, uh, I put music that would make me feel better, uh, not depressive kind, but like <laughs> like uh, people think that aggressive music is is bad, but you can get a lot of energy out of it, like, like, you're, like you're saying. And uh, I know this album uh, lyrically, I was reading that you wrote this, uh, obviously, in this, I think throughout the pandemic. So how, how much of that influenced the lyrics of this record? Um, so COVID, like the pandemic, like for me, it shut my life down. And I don't mean just yeah. like um, made me less busy. Like I was a busy, busy man and it shut it down. I didn't have an outlet. And uh, that caused more issues in my life. Um, and they they become quite they become quite big issues where health wise, mental health wise, um, I'm a, I've, I was the guy that was the, I don't know how you would say it um, in Puerto Rico, but a man's man, like you just get on with it. Everything's okay. I'm okay. Oh yeah, Move on. that's a very Hispanic yeah. mentality too. Like, okay. like, so, like crying is for CCs, Like you yeah. get up and do it. Yeah. So, you know, I, that, that, that's the kind of culture I'm from. Mm. Um, at some point, it cracks, and um, this album gave me the outlet to be able to sort of say how it felt as a guy who. Is brought up in that culture, but also understands it. Um, it is it is by far, by far the the most proud I've been in terms of the writing I've done because I know how real it is, and I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't scream for screaming's sake. It's not about bravado. There's no how low can I go, how high can I go. Uh, how cool can I look? It's about real. Whatever I scream is real. Whatever I do is real. Um, and that's what, because that's what connects with me as a, a music fan. You know, ultimately as a metal fan, if I look at the bands I love and I've loved for years, it's about that connection. Yeah. And it's not about individual ego. It's about the song connecting with me. And that's exactly what I wanted to deliver on this album. And for me, I feel I have, like lyrically, when I read it back, it chokes me up when I read it. So I know it's right. 
it's it's good and proper. It's not it's not doing it because I think it sounds cool, you know, like some kind of slaughtered lamb, blah 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 blah. It's actually real, what means to me. Yeah, no, and uh, I'm guessing when it came time for the record label to say like, hey, we need singles, how how did you go about singles for such a personal record? Like uh so, so what happened with the the label is that we recorded, we did a we did a song mm -hmm. with I mean, we changed things up production wise and um uh Lewis Jones, who was doing the mix and uh, for us, heard it and was like, Jesus, like this is good. We need to we need to like get this out. And that's how we, we were introduced. And um when they heard it, they were like, okay, this is this sounds you know different, sounds real, sounds good. Um and then from there, when we went into recording, Splinter James J was the real driving force in terms of um coordinating all the demoing so we really changed how we wrote like it used to be a case of turn up at, we have our own like band room our own rehearsal studio awesome we used to be turn up rock up jam get some ideas and we really said let's shift it that you know we're songwriters we're not just riff makers we're songwriters so let's write songs rather than just riffing out and then we'll we can riff around it a little bit so um yeah we 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 really start to change how we 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 demo and record and what we did is literally like i again we're a little bit older so i grew up on albums not on singles, on albums the 90s yeah. the 90s yeah 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 some bangers you know like american head charge you know like the war of art LD50, Mudvayne, these are albums that were written as standalone singles. They were written as a piece of music that could be consumed and, and enjoyed and a journey led. And we've always been really keen on that. Like having, the, the, what's the point in B-sides? We, we haven't got CD singles being sold in shops anymore. Mm -hmm. So we wrote loads of songs. Lots were scrap, some were not. And the, everything that we felt was a single went on the album. So um, it was actually quite difficult to select the yeah, singles. Yeah, I'm sure. Everyone we wanted to be a single. What do you reckon, Splint? Well, yeah. I, I remember, I remember we, we were, when we started to plan out what the, like the actual release schedule, well, we actually had some good conversations with Dan at Monarch. And we were go we were kind of going through what we had. So the unforgiving reality of nothing, that was an obvious one. That was like our we we record we written, recorded, produced that, you know, a long time before the album was finished. And then it was a case of well, what's going to have the most impact? <clears throat> and do we want to do do we want to have some variety as well? Like, do we want to pick three or four really different tracks on the album just to showcase what it's about? And I think that and that's the route that we took. So we wanted to pick the uh, the like four tracks. There's still one more to come out, just for anyone who's watching before the album when, when the album releases. Yeah, no, it's uh, uh, we you release MB, uh, which yeah. is the album opener, and if I'm not mistaken, hopeless solutions. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So they, I mean, they're really different different tracks, and that's and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to do a bit of a showcase. No one, no one had really heard any music from us since halfway through the pandemic when we released the misery ep so we thought right it's been a while let's get some people interested let's do something really different let's put some different like let's go some really really like polar opposite tracks out uh, and that's how we did it um and it's worked you know i think it's worked really well because we've not put the best tracks out as singles we've still got lots of like tracks on the album that are much better much heavier much more uh emotive Oh, I, I think it's good. Yeah, I know. Whose opinion is that? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. It, it, it was difficult, but I think we I think we picked the right ones. Yeah. Are you is is, is the unforgiving reality nothing a single that's going to be released? That was the first one that we so that was released uh last year, actually. Oh, so that so was 
Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. So we, we, we were, that was like the first one we did. So that was one of the first things we wanted to do with Monarch when we'd signed with them last year. They wanted, we wanted to get a track out just to get the, the, the machine moving. So we released we, that single. Yeah. And then we did, and then we started to do the album release this year with with Envy, Hopeless Solutions, and another one which will come out in a, in a few weeks' time. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so I want to show the artwork, which I think it's a picture, but it's a yeah, it's a pretty cool picture, so we can talk about it. So here we have it. Uh, who's the model? Me. Oh, she's an she's an unknown. It's you. No, it's, that's not you, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you talk through the artwork. <laughs> so, so yeah, so she's an un, she's an unknown. She, like she's not she's not anybody we know. We uh we sent a bit of a brief over to our to the guy from uh, to Dan from Make North who did our artwork for us, and we we sent a brief about what the album was, about how it was a, how a lot of the tracks were about the um about being human and about dealing with human things, but also about the um. The kind of the the beauty and loss and and the beauty in in the negative side of life. So this was like the first the first image that he came back with. You know, it's a beautiful lady, but she's been through a, quite a lot. Face is smidge, so she's an un unknown. But there's something quite there's something quite creative and beautiful about the picture. You know, off when you first look at it, especially and, and with the we, so we've we've got another image which um which will come out, which is hands as which is like scarred hands but you know when you first look at the image like you mm -hmm. think oh it looks it's a bit of a it's a bit horror horror based but when you really look at it you know she's a well-dressed person it's a really nice silhouette of a lady there's depth to it like, there's, there's a lot more to the to the to the art to the artwork this time around for us than we've ever had before we put a lot more thought into what it actually means um and i think it i think it ties in nicely with the the tagline you know the unforgiving reality in nothing it just seems, you know, it's a bit of, it, it feels like a, a dark title. This is a dark image, but when you really look at it, you really look at the meaning behind it, there's a bit of beauty behind it as well. Yeah, and she's also wearing a necklace that looks like a crown of thorns a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah so exactly. I think, I, think, I think it's like, you look at, like, there's lots of melodic sections in this album, even though it's quite searing, quite heavy. And that's the idea is that actually something can look damaged or look hard and look and look quite aggressive, yet actually be quite beautiful. And every piece of artwork in this in this whole project, um, for each track, we've purposely made sure that it's thematic and it makes sense with the lyrics, it makes sense with the music. Um, and that in terms of a package when it comes to the vinyl. Um, that Monica pushing out for us, that it's there as a full package, something that, like you said, in the 90s, 2000s, you know, you would love to pick up and have a look at and look at the, the you know, open the gatefold and have a look at it and basically enjoy it as a package. It's not just always about, you know, the sonic, the, the, the music side of things, but the visual... Um, the connotations that brings as well yeah no it's a, it's it, it is a great album cover and uh, so jay uh, you as a bassist I, i'm curious like uh which bass players influence your your playing oh flip how back. long have you got how long have you got <laughs> here we go i was gonna say that that's that's an entire interview myself but no um all right so the my main one, for, and I think the main one that's had the most influence over my style of playing in the band is Brian Martin from Mudvayne. Oh, he, I was he, wondering if you were going to say. <laughs> yeah, he just like he was something different when that when LD Fifty came out. Oh yeah, there was not a bassist alive that was doing anything anything like what he was doing. It was what it was one of the first albums where the bass was a prominent layer in an album. And it was technical. He infused jazz. He did everything that I just I loved about playing bass and put it into an album. He's been I and mean, I've watched his career. So he went from Mudvayne. I saw Mudvayne. I saw Mudvayne live in two thousand five. Did you? Oh, they I mean they I mean they're phenomenal live. But they're all amazing in yeah. like musicians. Um, do you, do you yeah. explain? I I saw the LD fifty tour Oof. with one minute silence. Oh. Remember the bass 
Yes. Oh. Yeah. Very good. So yeah, yeah. So I'll probably say out of, out of all of them, I, I'm I'm a yeah I'm a huge fan of Alex Webster as well from uh, Cannibal Corpse. Mm -hmm. His his technique is just phenomenal, and I'm always I've always been attracted to the bassists that kind of don't, that push push the boundaries and push the envelope when it comes to playing, and you know either aren't afraid to just do what's necessary, which maybe just be something simple, or just trying something a bit different. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Uh, yeah, the Mudbane one. I I remember when I saw Mudbane in Ausfest two thousand five. Yeah, he he was great. I never understood why Mudbane decided to took a haters, and then they did Hell Yeah. I fucking yeah. hated Hell Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's, the total, it's the total opposite of Mudbane. Yeah. Mudbane was great. Like like they kicked ass. The lyrics meant something, and then Hell Yeah was the most generic shit. It sounded like a Pantera cover band and not a good yeah. one. Uh, so a I bad one. I hate LD. Mudvayne <laughs> Bud are probably one of the most underrated metal bands. They came around in an era of new metal, which I look I, I quite yeah, like. Yeah, they, they got lumped in the new metal just like Slipknot and they were new metal to me. They were so no, they were like they were like Tool meets like new metal. They were like new metal with real like incredible music musicianship. Yeah. Um, the thing is, like, like I know bassists don't often get the kudos they deserve, but I'm very lucky to have a bassist like a Jay if I'm in the band that I'm in because he is a student of the art massively. Everything. Down, not just down to playing. I've I've never seen a bassist in the, in the UK being able to use his fingers like that. But down to tone and things like he's a, he's like on a quest for the perfect tone. He's like Lord of the Ring, but for the Lord of the Tone. It's just <laughs> like never, I'm never happy. I'm never happy. I'm so, never so happy. Jay, uh, would you say that you slap the bass, man? Hell yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Any opportunity. Any opportunity. And, and you know what? I, I I will fight anyone who says that there is no place in metal for slap bass because there fucking is. No. Yeah. And, 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 and Bobby, you know what he does with massive. the fingers and stuff like that. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So people slap that bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Daryl. Uh, I know that your singing style, you do different things. Uh, did did you have some vocalists like uh, growing up that influenced your style? Um, I, 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 a bit of a variant. I was always really into, when I was really young, I was into like grindcore and black metal. Mm -hmm. um, I still am. Um, so I've always liked, um, I've always liked the vocal that sounds real. It's not just sort of like, a forced fry vocal that doesn't feel emotion in it. It has to feel like someone's, like at Nazem, I was a big fan of Misko from Nazem, like really Syrian, Pig Destroyer, like it feels like it's somebody's got emotion in the vocal, uh, Cannibal Corpse, of course. Um, but for me, it was about finding my own identity as well as a vocalist. Um, so, yeah, I've it, like like black metal. I was massively into mayhem, uh, like dark throne, that kind of thing, and just kind of trying to make it my own a little bit. Um, as as long as it sounds honest, real, and aggressive, I like it. Like I I absolutely love the guy from like Not Loose because he. Whilst he might, oh, some that, that him, album, that not blues album is great. He sounds real. It's mm -hmm. not bullshit. It sounds like it's someone who's got aggression. So I, I grew up on so many different genres of metal: grindcore, black metal, death metal, hardcore. They were like my big, my my, my big sort of genres. So for me, as long as it sounds real, it sounds like you, and you're not just trying, you know. I, I've done a lot of like, like I've done a lot of work on my vocals as well. So you know, I I I I do 
whilst I... Um, it's it's I your instrument. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I might sound like the cookie monster uh, of Sesame Street, but I do I do take care. I do a lot of warm-ups. James will know how professional I can be as well. Okay. You know, I, uh, you know I, I take it seriously. I've done a lot... You know, I've worked a lot with a few decent vocalists in the metal scene as well. Um, and it's about, I take my my lungs and my vocals as serious as any other musician. So um, it's about being me, taking a piece of what I love and making it me, but it has to be real. It can't sound like I'm screaming for screaming's sake. When I get to that point, I'll quit. Because it's pointless. It's pointless. Well, I, I'm glad you mentioned the, the cookie monster because uh, I remember back in 2010, I took my uh, my ex-wife to a con She wasn't a metalhead, so I took her to Lamb of, see Lamb of God in Puerto Rico. And she heard yeah. them and they're like, why do they sound like the cookie monster? <laughs> she, was like, she was like, oh, cookie, cookie. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, no, I can understand what he's saying. But... I always get I, the one thing that everybody says to me that isn't into metal mm -hmm. is they go, I heard your song. You don't sound anything like that. And I say, <laughs> if I walk down the street and sound like that, I'll get arrested. Like, just, <laughs> you know, I can't. Yeah, can happened? you imagine like Daryl going to Starbucks or whatever to get a, a coffee? He's. He's like, give me coffee! <laughs> They'll be like, <laughs> Blood Wars! <laughs> no, please! <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You, you would be arrested, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, so, I like that you say that the vocals sound real because the, I have some problems with some modern metal bands that they sound like fucking AI. It's so much out of tune. And they're like, yeah, and you're like, you're like, oh, come on. Like you, it sounds fabricated and fake. Uh, I was listening to an album that came out today and uh, I, I'm covering, I'm, I'm going to talk about it this Sunday with some friends of mine because we have a series called Is It That Bad? <laughs> Where we talk about albums that we think we are, uh, they're bad. And sometimes we take new albums and then we pick the three or four worst songs and we say why they're bad. And at the end, we both thumbs up, uh, thumbs sideways or thumbs down. Uh, and, and we've done it with old albums that are like really, like, I'll, like I had this idea because a lot of people do music uh, on YouTube. They do videos of like great albums, like classic albums. But I was thinking, people need to talk about shitty albums. I'm like, I will, I want to talk about shitty, like about albums that maybe, and sometimes we talk about albums that have been mistreated and we're like, no, it's not that bad. So it's a pretty interesting thing. And we have yeah, some- Say Anger. Oh yeah, we already say did one. We already did Say <laughs> Anger. That was like the second episode. Uh, we did Saint Anger. The first episode we did Kid Rock, Devil Without a Cause. I used oh. to love it when it came out, but it's aged really poorly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, we've done like newer stuff, but uh, like we even done like controversial episodes. Like we we did an episode with the last Tool album. And a lot of people were like, uh, Tool fans were like, how dare you? I'm, I'm like, I'm like, well, it's not their best record. So like, uh, and we did for yeah. it. So yeah, it's pretty interesting because we, we took obviously the ones that everyone knows, yeah, they're bad. We did the St. Angers, the Lulus, uh, the Megadeth Risk, you know, the albums that people are going to, yeah, they're bad. But then we pick albums that maybe people are like, is it bad? And they have to think about it. It's pretty fun. Uh, we have fun. But that new, uh, that new band uh, put out the album this Friday and I, I and I, sent an email to my buddies like we need to do this album <laughs> so you, which you, which, ba which band's this oh don't worry it's not you you imagine like it's your album no 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 it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a it's a band I'm called a flight to puerto rico yeah. right now <laughs> yeah when, when i post this this is this is already going to be online so it's a band called wage war um, oh really? Yeah. See, I, I, I I'm, I'm keen. I, I don't, not, not heard the album yet. I've not heard it, but I think, I think Wage War can, 
they, they can throw out a banger. I've not heard the album. On this album, they put the auto tune on coke on, on control, man. Like okay, yeah, <laughs> this, yeah. This is where this is where I do, I do have a problem. So I am an avid fan of heavy metal, heavy, 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 heavy music, but it has to be for me. I, I, the production has to match the music. Okay, mm -hmm. so. But at the same time, it, if it's well produced, like this is what I was saying before about Nazm, they were the first grindcore band to have really good production, but it sounded like it it matched it. Hmm. For me, if it if it starts to sa sound too sanitized, yeah, I can't cope. I can't cope. I need it to be polished, um, but I want it to feel real. I want it to feel like. Um, you know, if if you can't if you can't do a vocal or or a or a guitar solo or whatever it is by not chopping it down by every note, then don't bother. Just stick to simplicity and keep some of the realism in music. Keep the feel. It's about feel, isn't it? That that's what we grew yeah, up on. Is. You know, it's all about feeling. But you know, there's like albums in the nineties. Like I love Nevermind by Nirvana, but obviously it's more Polish. But it still sounds real. But then yeah. they did the opposite with In Utero and went like more punk and more in your face. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a great example. But yeah, uh, but yeah, we 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 have fun here in the channel. But no, it's not touring. <laughs> I'm <laughs> going for that. Thank you. No, 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 no. It's, it's not that. Uh, yeah, but no, we've done other. We we've talked about six feet under, uh, because of the the singing. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, no, no, like we. Uh, and it's a funny thing because I interviewed uh, Jack O. Oh. Oh, I I interviewed oh. no, I didn't. Thank God I didn't interview Chris Barnes because <laughs> I'm I, 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 I'm like so so your vocals. <laughs> I mean, what is that about i'm like i couldn't know what to ask him but no i, I interviewed jack jack owen so about ah. the new album but it's funny because i i, I listened to it and i interviewed him and uh he in the interview he talked more about the album and the guitar parts were good but then but i didn't want to tell him that i was thinking of doing that album for an is it that bad episode when it came out <laughs> but but yeah but it wasn't Still, as uh, bring, as the one. Bring, bring her a blood. What a tune that is. <laughs> bring, no, bring, is it bring what is it called? What's the German version they call it? Bring a death brutus or something. <laughs> no, but it wasn't yeah. as bad as the 2020 record that they put out. And so yeah. But you know, it's it's all about musical taste. So uh so beside your your album right now, is there any before I let you guys go, is there any new new albums that you guys are listening to? Wow. Ooh. Um, ooh. Uh, for me, right, there's a band in the UK called Graphic Nature that I think are uh, very, mm. very good. I'll have to check them like, out. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah, they... Yeah. Um, That's they, a good they, name they, for a band, Graphic Nature. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, they're really good. Um, the... I have to admit, I've, the... And I think it's going to be my, one to be one going to be one of my all time favorites. Is the latest um, Currents album in Death We Speak? I think it's in Death We We See. Um, oh, Australia. You know had a new album. I got to check it out. Oh, yeah. it's phenomenal! Absolutely phenomenal. It's one of those albums that you can listen all the way through, and it's just it's just banger after banger after banger. Production's amazing. Songwriting's amazing. Uh, it's brilliant. Right, and it's, you know, and the, oh, I love the fact that they've gone. The tunings are just ridiculous, and it, it, but it doesn't sound ridiculous. They've, they've done it perfectly. Great album, really good album. Awesome. Yeah, so I'll have the, to uh, once out, yeah. So, you know, it, it's awesome to see, like, some... For, for me, I remember um, I took my dad to watch Partway Drive, and Partway oh. were being supported by Lorna Shaw. And, uh, and, and While She Sleeps, I, I absolutely love all... Oh, uh, while, she, while she sleeps, I remember that so what album. I love. I played that so much when it came. Yeah. Brain, Brainwash is still one of my favorite tunes of all yeah. time. But I, I remember, I remember like watching 
Lawler with my dad, and my dad was like, "What? Like these guys are killing it, and you know they're heavy." I was like, "It's awesome to see a band like this musically brilliant, um, songwriting brilliant, be on a stage like this." Uh, so I'll give I'll give as everybody probably does a bit of a shout to Lorna because. The, the great, you know, it, it's good. To, whenever I see a heavy band, look, the way I look at it is the more heavier bands that people can connect to, the better it is for everybody, you know. Yeah. You know, the more, the more musically we can get connected, the better. So, but yeah, gra graphic nature, current of killer, absolutely. Yeah, killer. yeah um, good suggestions. I'll have to check. I listened to Currents, uh, but I didn't know they had a new album, but I'll check out Graphic Nature. So once the album is out on the 12th, do you guys have some shows planned? What's what's next for touring? So we are... Is touring, we are touring, touring. <laughs> we will be. <laughs> Puerto Rico, bring us to Puerto Rico. <laughs> I, will, I will be all over that. We are, we are just in the, the process of yeah. planning our poor side of things. The last few months have been so wrapped up in the album and everything that now we're just sort of planning things. So we're kind of looking into, this sounds mad, but we're kind of looking into next year now. Uh, we've got some sort of key gigs booked over in the UK, but the, for us, it's about getting away and around and about. And yeah, so we, we You want to come uh, to Puerto Rico and eat some mofongo? <laughs> oh hell yeah! Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not messing about, brother. Bring us to Puerto Rico, and we'll go. We will go. Yeah. There's there, there's there's your. I've I've laid the gauntlet down for you. Bring us to Puerto Rico. We'll go. Yeah, I, I have to talk with my my. I have some musician friends here that bring bands. Uh, okay, because that would be awesome. So. Uh, so yeah, the album people is going to be out on the 12th uh, for everyone uh, who is interested. Touring, the unforgiving reality, nothing. If you want, I think if you've seen this, like, like it's a real album, people. It's it would be like if if this was a Dave Chappelle sketch, it would be I keep it real and no, <laughs> you remember that sketch? It's like when keeping it real goes wrong. <laughs> Something, but no, yeah, it's a it's a album that it's hard to describe because it has like we like every song's different, and I think that's good to have difference because there's nothing more boring than an album that every song sounds the same. Uh, yeah, you want some variety, some variety. So uh, I want to thank you know Daryl and Jay, you know, for taking some time of your. Uh, apparently it's night over there, even though I, I see it's so bright. Uh, of your night, <laughs> to, to, to... This, this 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 is the actual longest day in the oh, UK. Oh my God! Yes, so it's the summer so, solstice. Happy summer it solstice. Is. Happy yeah, summer solstice. Yeah, it, it is the summer solstice. <laughs> so that means here in Puerto Rico, it's hot as fuck. And <laughs> <laughs> I work cold. I'm windy. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, well, yeah. Thank you for, for joining me virtually from England to Puerto Rico. So people, check out Touring, uh, the new album out pretty soon. I'll post the link for people who want to pre-order. So until next time, people. This is Hector, the shield dude on a couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you. Nice one. Cheers, Hector. Goodbye. <laughs>